Hey, what's up guys? Uh, I've got another brew day on today. I'm brewing my uh, house pale. Um, I'm going to be using the hops from Timmy Jenkins because I've had them for about three weeks, nearly a month now, and they're really fresh, so I want to use them while they're fresh. Um, I'm going to try and get 38 litres, enough to cake two cakes full. Um, I've got reverse osmosis water, two of these full, that should be 44 litres. And then I've got a couple of these, uh, just two, two of these, which is five litres of just spring water, which should be fine. I'm going to do water treatments as normal. Um, and then this um, I'll use to liquor back if necessary, the, the 10 litres of, uh, of stuff. I've also got this new, uh, new brew builder fermenter, and I'll bring you over here to have a look. Brew builder fermenter, I mean this thing is a beast. See there's like eight, eight clips to hold the lid on. Um, there was a little dent in the lid over here, I'm not sure if you can see that. Um, but I got hold of them, I said look there was a dent in the thing and they are, they said use the lid until the replacement arrives and then just send it back to them, so really good service from them, really happy with that. Um, today I want to aim for about 50 IBUs and about 5.5% ABV, see how close I get. Uh, it's going to be a simple grain bill, um, I don't even know what grains I've got yet, but it'll be as close as I can get to my grain bill for my house pale, which I really like. It's, a, it's going to be a very pale um, ale. So, uh, yeah, come along for the ride. Hey guys, okay, so the strike water is nearly at temperature. I'm going to be mashing in for a target temperature of 65.5 degrees, so anywhere from 65 to 66, I'm happy. Um, I've done my water additions. I'm going for a, a sulfate to chloride ratio of three, um, which should uh, be bang on for this style. <coughs> so my grain bill is nine kilos of Maris Otta, half a kilo of caramel, uh, 20, uh, half a kilo of Munich, and just under 400 grams of flaked oats. Uh, so it's a pretty simple grain bill. The Munich is a few months old and I'm just using it up. <coughs> I'm not sure what it's going to do to the flavor. It hasn't changed the color overly much. So yeah, a couple of minutes I'll, I'll uh, dough in. I'm bringing a bag again today, so all in a single vessel. So it should be an easy brew day. and. Um, potentially going to put it uh, straight into the fermenter, it's a stainless steel fermenter now, hot, seal the fermenter up and then just let it cool down, I'll put it on the concrete um, of the garage floor, just let it cool down overnight and uh, pitch the yeast tomorrow. I'm using uh, the Kvake yeast which I really liked last time, um, I'm not going for 50 IBUs, I'm going for more for like 35 to 40 IBUs. Uh, so, and I'm using Citra and uh, Mosaic, so, they're around here somewhere, yeah, this is the leftover Citra from the last batch from Timmy Jenkins, and then here's the new bag of Mosaic, so I'm going to put a shit ton of hops in onto the dry hop, probably use all half a kilo of that Mosaic in this batch, it's, a, it's obviously a double batch, but it's going to be hoppy, it's going to be a tasty one. Um, ABV here is showing me that the ABV is going to be 5.9% but because I'm doing brew in a bag my, my efficiency is, is not dialed in. This is, this is my three vessel system efficiency that's, that's dialed in here. So I'd expect to um, end up with about a 5.4% uh, somewhere around there which is totally cool with me. Happy with that. 5.9 is getting towards the, you know, don't want to have too many of them in a night, on a, on a school night. So, yeah. Uh, what did I add? I added gypsum. I added calcium chloride. I added Epsom salts. And I added salt, table salt. 
So, yeah. Should be doing in any minute now. I probably won't film the doing in. Maybe I'll film a little bit in the hop drops, but um, maybe I won't. We'll see. Okay, so we've mashed in, doed in. Um, there's uh, my pH, which is somewhere between 5 and 5.4. So, cool, I'm happy with that. Temperature was slightly lower, it's about 64 degrees, that's okay as well. Um, probably just end up with a slightly thinner beer. Uh, I'd like to introduce Ian, my co-brewer for today. He's, uh, cheers. We're, you see that? That's proper co-brewing right there. Um, he has to a good brew day. Cheers, Ian. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Hey guys, so um, I didn't film anything else with the brew day. It was only two hop drops really and I had some I had a mate here, um, Ian, who you saw earlier on, and the kids were just a handful. Um, one mistake I made today, the bad part of this was that um, brewing in the bag, uh, what I wanted to do was recirculate into the bag, so I pulled the bag to one side of the kettle, and I was recirculating too fast, so actually I ran dry in the kettle while the water was, while the wort was trying to seep through the bag. And I've scalded my um, one of my um, elements, which I'll show you here. You see that there? It's fucking horrendous. So I'm not sure if I've ruined it. I mean, the element did work. I was tempted to not use it during the boil, but I needed a vigorous boil. Um, uh, a bit disappointed with that, but shit happens. I might have to replace it. I'm going to try and clean it with some. Uh, uh, citric acid or something like that. Um, this is what I ended up with. Oh, another, <laughs> another cock up is my new fermenter, um, which is sitting down there, the one from Brew Builder. I started to drain the liquid, the wort, into the fermenter, um, and then I ran out to go and look after the kids and sort some stuff out. And I hadn't put the tap on. <laughs> it was just a hole in the bottom of the pot. So I lost about two liters to that, so it's not the end of the world. It could have been a hell of a lot worse if I let it just run, but anyway. I lost a couple of liters to that, a bit of a clean up, I've had to mop the floor and all that shit. Um, but it looks lovely. It's sitting at 10.44. Uh, I've got 40 liters um, to the graduated mark, just gone 40 liters, uh, just above 40 liters in the fermenter. So I'm gonna pitch the Kolsch yeast, which I have here. Not the Kolsch, no, not the Kolsch, the Kavik yeast. Both of those have a shitload of Kavik yeast. I'm just getting them up to room temperature. They've been in the fridge, obviously. I'll pour off all the water off the top and um, get them in the fermenter. Tomorrow, I'm just letting it cool down. I'm gonna put the fermenter in the garage on the concrete and just let it cool itself down overnight and then I'm gonna put it in the morning. Um, it tastes quite bitter. I'm not sure if running it dry has caused an issue with flavor. You know, having that shit on the, on the, on the uh, element could be a problem. Whatever, you know. It was nice to have Ian here. So I'm gonna do a brew day with Ian um, in the not too distant future, hopefully. And we'll probably do a vice beer, which I haven't ever brewed. So that'll be an interesting one. Try and do a nice big batch of that as well. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the Kavake yeast, and then I've obviously got, it's about 500 grams, well, 440 grams of dry hoppage, um, half and half, mosaic and citra. Um, I might just post this video and then post a separate video of the tasting, I don't know. I don't think I've got enough footage, we'll, we'll see. Um, yeah, so guys, another brew day done. That should fill up the other two kegs. I did also keg, um, one keg of my Kolsch today. I'll keg the other keg with Kolsch tomorrow um, when I need the fermenter, fermentation fridge um, for, for the big fermenter. So yeah, take it easy guys. Hey guys, so um, I didn't take any more footage of the actual brew day. It was pretty straightforward. Um, had a couple of issues, I think I might have already mentioned them, but I uh, just wanted to show you the fermenter. She's in the fermenter now. This thing's got like all these clips and it's got a seal so it actually it should be pretty good. Um, the tri-clamp fitting at the top doesn't fit a standard bung, doesn't fit a bung like this, it's a bit too big. 
So um, I'm not actually going to put a bubbler on here because it's just a, it's just a pale ale. But this is my Kuwait yeast that I've uh, I've taken it out of two mason jars and just mixed it up, and I'm just going to tip that in. Tuck it away. Um, you see here, it's a decent sized fridge, but I had to take the um, the end piece off the where is it? This piece because it just I couldn't get the door closed, and I was like, I had measured everything, but I hadn't measured expecting this to protrude as much as it does. I'm going to probably try and find a tri clamp one piece tap so that we can just I can tri clamp a tap straight onto here. It should be a bit shorter then. Um, other than that, yep, um, hoping this Kavake yeast gets it done nice and quick. And then uh, I should be back in business on the beer front. Um, I kegged the Kolsch last night. Tasted it. doesn't have very much flavor at all. So I'm, I'm going to put something on the Facebook group and ask. Maybe put some dry hops in the keg or something just to give it a live in it up. It's just very dull. Um, other than that, catch you guys on the next one. So this is the uh, home, uh, what's it called, the house pail, uh, I've got uh, the, I checked three days ago, gravity was down to 1020, so it sh we should be down to around about 1015 or 1012 now, um, all, all fully fermented out, um, so I'm going to smash in 100 grams of, uh, of uh, citra and 100 grams of mosaic. And I'll take another gravity reading just to just to see what's what. But um, it's the Quebec yeast, so I'm using a muslin bag which is wrapped around this plate, this bowl. Um, I boiled that for 15 minutes in water just to sterilize it, and uh, I'll leave that in for three days, and then I'll chuck another 100 grams of each in for another three days. So I should be next Friday, I should be ready to uh, get in the kick. So yeah, all good in the hood. Okay, so um, I've chucked in the hops, I ended up using 115 grams of each, mosaic and uh, citra. Here's the uh, trial jar, it's clearing up nicely, I really like the colour on that. It's a little bit darker than my house pail was last time, but I did put some Munich in and I'm not sure what the um, what the colour rating was on that to be honest. It just was just called Munich. <laughs> I think I bought it from uh, Will at the Fermenter a little while ago, back when he was selling. Just wanted to use it up. <clears throat> but, the big news here is uh, that Kvake yeast has... Um, overshot my estimate. That was supposed to end up about 10.08, 10.09. That is 10.02 or 10.03. Um, so, well, as long as it's not too dry, uh, taste-wise, I haven't tasted it yet. The smell coming out of there is great, and that's before I put the hops in, so it's going to be really nice hop forward. Um, yeah. I think that Kuwait yeast has added a really nice sort of fruity, when I opened the fermenter to uh, to put the hops in, it was, yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, it's very dry. Definitely a bit of an alcohol, um, like a fusel type uh, flavor to it but it's I've got it in there at 28 degrees so I can expect like a, this the, at this temperature it's probably a bit too warm and it's probably giving off the the, uh, the wrong type of flavors um, that'll probably settle down but what I'm going to start doing now is ramping the temperature down because I know um, at that temperature I will be adding bitterness with these hops and, and it's intentional because I brewed this at 35 um, IBUs and um, it's not bitter enough for the for the um, you know for the style. So I'm hoping to add about another 10 IBUs um, during the during the uh, the dry hopping. Um, and also I'm going to get so much more on the nose um, 
with the dry hop. So I'm, 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 I'm happy with the uh, mouthfeel, happy with the aroma. Uh, flavor needs to settle down a little bit. Um, that's probably the Kvake, though, you know, it does, uh, anyone who's brewed with Kvake, you know it, uh, <laughs> it's a lively yeast. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. So I've got 42 odd liters or whatever um, to, to keg. So I'm guessing that with the true lost to true and all of that, I should fill just about fill two kegs um, with that. So absolutely perfect. Two kegs waiting to be filled. We're back in action. So yep, that will get me back to fill um, full, and also it will allow me to keg off some of the uh, velvet Merlin, which is just coming right now. So um, I'll probably come back at the at the tasting. Hey guys, okay, this is uh, just getting ready for the second dry hop. So that bag has to soak in, uh, or boil in that water for 15 minutes. Um, I've got the mosaic here, which, see it's quite a, quite a lot of powder in there, but I'm just going to chuck in 100 grams of that. And I've got these um, citra pellets, I've finished the pellets from Timmy Jenkins. So I'm going to open these and check. If they smell nice and fresh, then I'll use them. If they don't, I'll do it 200 grams of mosaic and no citra. Um, ran out of citra, uh, the fresh stuff. So we'll see how we get on. I'm just going to weigh it all out and uh, get it in the fermenter. So today is Tuesday night. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Friday night should be the night that I uh, go right ahead and pack all this uh, into a keg or at least start to cold crash it. Um, for for kegging, so the, the the original hop drop will have been in there for seven seven or eight days, which is fine for me. Cool. That's uh, that's actually a hundred grams. That that little bag. <laughs> it looks like less. Um, okay, so it smells alright, the citra. Um, not as fresh as the stuff from Timmy Jenkins, but whatever. Um, I think there's going to be enough hoppage in here and enough fresh hoppage that uh, it's not really going to matter too much. It's going to be juicy. So that means it'll have had uh, 430 grams of, of dry hoppage on top of the hops that went in the, in the boil. So, but for a double batch, that's a, that's a 40, about 42 litre batch, um, should be nice. Not sure if you can see, but uh, here she goes. That's, uh, let me show you, the smell coming out of there is just insane at the moment. Um, there she is. Two bags floating around, having a good time. I'm wondering if I should turn this other bag over. It looks like it's only laying one way, but it'll absorb the, it'll have absorbed the, the wort, so it should be okay. But I think I'll turn it over anyway. Hey there, happy campers. So it's uh, Monday night, and I am going to give you guys a bit of an update because I'm in here kegging my uh, house pail, which is a this one is a Citra. And mosaic pale ale with a lot of hops in. Got the keg cleaned down here, it's all ready to go. Just need to sanitize this bad boy. Um, I've sanitized the pipe, it's all in here. Um, so, <clears throat> unfortunately, I have two kegs to fill, and one of the kegs has still got beer in it. So, I'm gonna probably have to try and figure out how to use my beer gun. Could be fun. Maybe I'll film some and you can come along for the ride. Okay, so I've never used this fermenter before um, and the pickup does seem quite low down on the, uh, on the uh, tube line here. So it's possible that the first taking will be a little bit uh, yeasty or have a bit of tube in. So I wanted to have a look at it anyway. <coughs> I'll take probably about half a litre, maybe maybe a litre, depending on how clear it comes out. And hopefully, 
that would be enough to just clear the pathway, so to speak. Okay, so <coughs> I've washed the second keg out and I'm busy filling it up now. Um, I just wanted to show you, it appears, I don't know if you can see that, but it appears as though the, the second keg full is going to be quite a lot um, clearer. But I'm still going to save that as a second keg, I'm going to leave that one to age until the first keg is finished. That one's going to sit for two weeks on gas before, before I even try it anyway. Okay, so um, now I need to get the, uh, get the geyser open. In. Okay, so I've got the gas on here. The gas is set to about 12 psi. You can hear it, it whines. Just burp it a couple of times, purge the headspace. Hey guys, happy homebrew weekly or whatever it is. It's the last bit of my video. Um, the Citra IPA, with Citra, Citra and Mosaic IPA. Um, it's not quite 100% ready yet, but I'm going to do the tasting because I'm going to be jetting off to South Africa, not too distant future. So there's a little bit of a cap on it. Uh, still quite hazy, I expect. Um, how can I show you this? Let's see if I can show you this. Uh, it's my flavourly glass. So it's not uh, it's not the end of the world hazy, but it's. Uh, I mean, it's only been in the keg a week. Um, the one thing with this is, I think right at the beginning of the video, I said I think I might end up with about 5.4%, and then after I brewed it, I really moved that estimate down. Um, but then it ended up fermenting out to 10.02, 10.03, so it ended up at 5.4 on the dot. Now the problem with that is I expect it to be extremely dry, um, possibly too dry. Now this has had a lot of hops in the dry hop. A lot of hops, I could just, I mean, you just smell it off the top. In fact, I could probably give that some time to settle, you know, just age, and maybe the hop aroma will die back a little bit. And uh, a little bit of malt aroma coming through there as well. It might be from the uh, Munich that I had in there. It's a nice colour. I really like that sort of orange, uh, orange kind of colour to it, so let's have a taste. Okay, definitely still a bit green, but I had a little taste of this um, last week. It had been in the keg for a couple of days, and it's already tasting better. I was I've been googling what am I going to do? Should I put some uh, some lactose in there? Uh, you know, boil up half a kilo, oh, sorry, two hundred and fifty grams of lactose in a bit of water, and just chuck that in the keg, try and build up some little bit of sweetness and body. But that's that's uh, hmm. there's a decent amount of sweetness coming through on there now. The bitterness has died back a little bit, and the hop flavour is actually really quite nice. Once that's fully carved, once that's carved up, that could be really quite nice. So yeah, I'm quite happy that I've changed to that hop schedule, and um, I'm just a bit. I think I missed my mash temperature, it's probably where the, it ended up fermenting all the way down. And also I pitched Kvaik yeast and I over pitched it, so it's Kvaik yeast, what are you going to do? It's not going to leave a stone unturned. But it's done a good job cleaning up as well because I don't taste any byproducts in there, but I do taste um, quite a lot of bitterness. Um, not an excessive amount that makes it un undrinkable or unpalatable but there's an element of bitterness in there that from experience I know will die back 
So I'm off to South Africa next week um, for a week and then um, when I get back I will uh, probably post this video because I can't post it before I go because I'm going there to surprise a mate. <laughs> Um, anyway, I call that one a success. I've got another keg of it in the fridge as well because it was a double batch. Um, tempted to do one more batch before I go. I'm looking at the Bell's Two Hearted, which I think might just be the one I do. It looks like a really nice one, and I've got um, loads of a Centennial or Cascade um, in the in the hop drawer. So, yeah, guys, that's been a great one. Um, I'm glad the scalding uh, didn't come through for the scalding on that uh, element and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. Take it easy and keep on brewing. <laughs>